Now, the Google enthusiasts among you will already know the answer to this one, but the Pacific Blenny is a fish, but it lives on land and jumps around, and this makes it certainly one of the strangest animals in the world. They're found on the island of Guam in the Pacific and offer scientists a unique opportunity to work out how animals transition from living in the sea to becoming land dwellers. Researchers at the University of New South Wales have been studying these strange fish to work out how they fend off their predators. Sarah Farnsworth spoke to Dr Terry Ord, something of an expert on the matter. First things first, if this animal has no legs, how does it leap? Uh, That's a really good question. So what they do is they bend their tail around and their tail fin they put flat to the ground and use as almost a suction pad and they leap like frogs. So are we talking great feats of physical ability here? I mean, how far can they jump in comparison to their size? So they're about six centimetres from the tip of their nose to the base of their tail. So they're quite small. So you think about something that will fit into the palm of your hand. Um, But when they decide to jump, um, they can be going up to um, almost a metre. So that's actually quite a fair way for a little fish like that, particularly because it's on land as well, of course. My general understanding of a fish is that it has gills, fins, and it lives in water. So why is this species that lives on land still considered a fish? You know, if you were to see them and you actually see them in the water, like if you were to push them into the water, you would actually say that they were a fish. But um, when they're out on land, they still use their gills to breathe, just like a regular fish. Um, But they also use their um, skin, so they breathe through their skin, just like a frog does. And the consequence of that is um, they have to stay moist. So although they're out of the water, they need to stay in what we call a splash zone, so basically where the waves are still crashing up against the rocks. If they dry out, um, basically they uh, asphyxiate, so they suffocate. So looking at it in front of you, would you be able to see, oh, yeah, that's a fish? Yeah, um, you probably mistake it as a fish-like slug, perhaps, crawling around and jumping around on the uh, on the rocks. Um, the locals on Guam, where the, uh, the fish that we studied um, is found, they call them monkey fish, for example, and you would be doing a double take and if you were to look closer you would see that they were you know something definitely looking like a fish. So your latest research has concentrated on just how these um, blennies uh, protect themselves from predators so uh, do they they face like a double-edged threat from both uh, land and sea and I suppose they could also face a threat from the air. Well that's true Um, so their primary problem I guess for being out on land is, is aerial predators so in particular things like seabirds um, but they also face things like land crabs um, and actually uh, other lizards that are hopping around um, around the intertidal zone or out on the rocks as well. So what did your study uh, come up with? Well, first of all, if you do see these fish, um, they are quite cryptic in the sense that they match the uh, the colour and the uh, the pattern of the rocks. So they actually have a lot of camouflage as their, as their body coloration. And what that means is, is that they've evolved this colour pattern to try and avoid predation. So basically just trying to not stand out as a food item. Uh, and what we found is is that this technique of being cryptic, as you would imagine, is highly specific to where uh, they happen to be found. So if they are out on the beach, they go from being very camouflaged on the rocks to being very conspicuous. What can this type of fish tell us about the theory that all animal life form originated in the water and then slowly came up on land? They give us a a snapshot about what that early transition might have been like and the sort of challenges that these fish back in the late Devonian may have faced um, for things like um, new predation pressures or just the requirements of trying to breathe and move about on land. Well, that's Dr Terry Ord with Sarah Farnsworth on the trials and tribulations of the Pacific Blenny, a fish that looks like a slug, apparently.